Hey, this morning we come together as a church community deeply affected by the devastating impact of Hurricane Helene. Maybe some of you in the room experience very little, but we know that many in our South Tampa community and even in our South Tampa Fellowship Church, they, affected, well, they were affected a lot. Uh, some are calling it unprecedented, catastrophic. Uh, our friend Harold Moore called me yesterday and said in 48 years of living on the island, he had never seen anything like it. You know, our hearts are heavy as we grieve the loss, some their homes, others vehicles or valuables and livelihood, and yes, even in some cases, the loss of a loved one. You know, in times like these, it is natural to feel overwhelmed, but I want to assure you today that God is near, and even in our suffering and sadness, uh, we can remember this saying, that every storm runs out of rain. Psalms 34 verse 18 reads like this, the Lord is near to the brokenhearted. And he saves the crushed in spirit. You know, many of you have endured great personal trials. And if it wasn't you, it probably was a family member, if not a friend or a neighbor. And some are left asking the question, why, Lord? Where do we go from here? Listen, as one of your pastors, I don't pretend to have all the answers, but here's what I do know. That God's love has not left you and has not left us. You know, even in our darkest moments, God remains our refuge and strength as we have already been singing about this morning. Psalm 46 verse 1 and 2 tells us, God, you are our refuge, our strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear Though the earth gives way, though the water of Helene washed and ran through our community, God's steadfast love is our shelter that we hold on to. And I would remind all of us this morning that we look to the cross, that Jesus Christ himself took on pain and loss and devastation, and he walks with us even now. Hebrews 4, 15 and 16 reminds us that Jesus is our high priest. And as our high priest, he sympathizes with our weaknesses, that he is not distant but present. And he invites you, he invites us this morning to approach the throne of grace with confidence in our time of need. So this morning, uh, many of you have come and already have shared your story, your story of the storm on Thursday night, and therefore many of you are broken or beaten, weary, and all of us are a little wet. But we're full of hope today, because as we rebuild, we also have the opportunity together as a faith family to serve our community. And this storm may have washed away some physical things, but it, we have a chance to rebuild on the solid foundation of Christ. Matthew 7, Jesus is speaking of a wise man who built his house on a rock. And of course, he's using that as a picture, as a metaphor of building your life, not your living space on a rock. He says, and the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, but it did not fall because it had been founded on the rock. So where do we stand? We stand on that rock. Jesus Christ, the foundation of our faith, and nothing can shake that. No storm can wash that away. You know, in the last couple of days, I've experienced something truly extraordinary, even for our community. Garages have not been down, they've been up. 
as neighbors have helped neighbors, as strangers have become friends, and the selfless giving of time and resources, and yes, already Mark and our missions team and our GO team have been on the GO. Galatians 6.20 calls you and I to bear one another's burdens. That fulfills the law of Christ. So if you're asking, like, what should I do right now? What is my calling now? I I would tell you very simply, it is to support one another. Because if it wasn't you, it was someone very close to you. And so I would tell you to pray, to give, to do practical acts of love and compassion and care. And though it may be hard for some of you to see now, God's purposes will prevail, and and beauty will rise from ashes. So as we look forward, let us hold tightly to the hope that we have in Christ Jesus. And while this storm, yes, has left damages and scars, it cannot touch eternal promises that we have in the truth of God's Word and in Jesus. Because our hope is not in these things that we work so hard to possess. Our hope is in an eternal kingdom, the kingdom of God. So take courage, church family. Together, I promise you, we're going to rise above this. Together, many of you, we're going to help you rebuild, and not just your home, but your hearts as well. So in the coming days, I just want to make sure you know, Um, that we will have practical steps, we will have plans for you to submit where you need help, but also how you can help, how you can come alongside our GO team and you can be the hands and the feet of Jesus. So as a church, um, we're going to stand strong. And it's not necessarily because we're strong, but it's because of who Christ Jesus is inside of us And he's strong. He's strong and mighty. And I believe he's going to use us to be a great light in our community. I want us to spend a moment in prayer. Praying for our community, praying for our country. But listen, I also want to pray for you. Uh, There's many of you in here who've experienced water damage, if not worse. And and if, if you would be okay with this. Uh, If you've experienced some type of damage, would you just put your hand up, not to shame you, embarrass you, but we want to pray for you. So all over the room, just slip your hand right up. And as we, uh, if somebody's next to you and you're okay with this, maybe just put your hand on their shoulder. For others of you, you just kind of see them, lift your hand, point their way and just say, hey, brother and sister, I've got you. We're going to lift you up before the throne of grace this morning. Let's pray. Father God, um, it's so good that we can call on our Lord and Savior. We can see a picture of the cross. We can see the hurt and the pain that you suffered. And Lord, many of us, a lot, uh, there's things that have been lost that Some can be replaced, other things, no. And God, there's a sadness to that. Lord, there's grief to that. God, we know some that over the last 48 hours, this is the only time they've kind of sat still. Lord, you see the hands up in this room that even in our own church family, many of them who could not even come today. God, would you allow your presence to be nearer to them than they've ever experienced? God, would you overwhelm them with the charity of your grace, the generosity of your people. And God, there's there's others who didn't even want to lift their hand because they're like, mine wasn't that bad. God, would you allow them to humble themselves and allow the church family to help? God, there's so many people in this room that they're just givers. That's just who they are. Lord, right now they need to be a receiver and allow them to be open to that. God, we pray for uh, first responders. 
God, we pray for the power line workers and all the adjusters, everybody who, they, they're working like crazy. God, we ask that you, you would keep them safe, God. Um, pray for all those who are in the process of cleaning and rebuilding, trying to figure out what the next steps are, that you would give them wisdom. God, we pray that you would show yourself even in these times. God, we lift up our community. God, thank you for the stories we've already heard of a go team showing up and someone saying, I'm, I'm so far from God, I can't believe you guys stopped at my house. Lord, how you're already like drawing people to you even through a storm. So Lord, would you continue to do that? God, we love you. Lord, our hope is in you. It's not in something that we possess. Lord, it's in you. So Lord, help us to, to stay heavenly focus and yet God understanding you've called us right now to to be of earthly good so God help all of us to do our part to give to pray to work to encourage to inspire to come alongside to text someone call someone go by and see someone just show up Lord would you show off during this time in Jesus name we pray amen uh, I, I did this at nine. It, it's, it's not in the notes. I just really felt compelled. Um, Thursday, probably like a lot of you, walked outside. And I know for us, we've lived in our home for about eight years now. It's like this is less than what normally, normally happens during a storm. Matter of fact, uh, Caleb, our middle son, who's getting ready to get married in just a couple of weeks, we were standing on the porch and he was like, Dad, do you honestly think water from the bay could come rushing down our street? And I'm telling you, an hour later, from our front door to our neighbor's front door across the street, it was like the O'Brien River. I've never seen anything like it. And I was reminded that the Bible tells us, like a thief in the night, shall be the return of Christ, to be ready. You know, some of us were not ready for the storm. Listen, that's one thing. But church, I, I'm pleading with you. I'm begging. If I could get down on my knees and beg you, make sure you're ready for the day Christ returns. And if it's not the return of Christ, it's the day of your passing. Because here's what we all know. Every single one of us, one day, we, we shall pass. Are you eternally ready for that? And just sitting in a church service doesn't make you ready. The Bible says that we believe in our heart and we repent. We confess with our mouth. And if you've never done that, man, I can't think of a better day than this day. For you to give your life to Jesus Christ as your Savior. Listen, all of us are going to pass at one time. Everything's going to be washed away. But those who have built their eternal life on the rock of salvation shall stand. Would you stand today? If you've never put your faith in Christ, man, we would beg you, urge you, plead with you. You're, you're getting ready to hear an amazing message. Um, I can't think of a better pastor on our staff than for Danny. He is so pastoral in everything he does. He's going to come and share with you. You're going to hear today a blind man who received his sight. I wonder today if you're like that. Maybe, again, you've read the Bible, you've prayed, obviously you're here this morning or watching our live stream, but do you have sight? Like, do you see? Have you experienced salvation? And if not, why not today? Today is the day of salvation. May it be so with you. May God bless you, church.